Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show. Yes. And that's it. That's what I'm going to do now from now on. What do you think about that, Matt? That's going to cause a lot of hoopla. The internets and galaxies and worlds. Most passionate wine program. And today we're going blind because you love when we do it. We're going Pinot Noir blind. I'm excited about this. We'll see what's here. Not quite sure. The only thing I know is that two of them are screw top and two of them are not. I got a Jets glass and a Jets bucket mop. And uh, and uh, I'm excited about today's show. You know, uh, I uh, want to link up one thing. I'm going to be in South Beach at the end of this month. And uh, at the South Beach Food and Wine Festival, I have two seminars. So Mott, link that up. And uh, I hope you're, if you're in the Florida area, if you're gonna go, you know, all those food stars, you know, the Rachel Rays and the Bobby Flays and the Mario Bees. So it's gonna be fun, should be a good time. I hope I see you down there. Please uh, sign up if you're in the area, make the schlep, we will hang. Cause you know I'm not just gonna do this seminar. We'll take the pictures and the hugs and we'll be friends. And arm wrestling, I'll win. Chinese football, I've never lost. You know, that thing. So, you know, that's exciting for me. Please check that out. I also wanna give a major shout out to uh, Sam KW and Seller Rat 5 for jumping in, I saw that BFR, BFR1028 uh, left a comment on, on, over the weekend or Monday and, uh, and Sam KW and Cellarat5 jumped in and answered the question he asked the nation, the nation responded. That is why I love this new comment section down below. Um, I like it and I want to give a huge shout out to them um, because that was very nice of them. They came in, gave good answers. I like this whole like team love, family, atmosphere, I'm into it. Wine number one. Maybe my single favorite nuance of Wine Library TV is that we zoom in on the bag in blind episodes. Ma, I'm telling you, it's my favorite little thing. Uh, this Pinot Noir, right off the bat, is got some nice color. I can still see my fingers through it, so that's like positive. But, man, you can smell that, huh? Wow, really stink -fied. Let me give a sniffy sniff. Just a really interesting nose. Uh, I get a, a hint of bacon coming through on the nose, but definitely a barnyard component. Uh, a little bit of old worldness coming through on the nose. While still having a little bit of a vibrance on the front end, but I'll tell you right, right now, and I, you know, I'm always transparent with you guys. If this did not have a screw top, I would think that this was old world Pinot, but just thinking, oh man, how many Burgundian wines are screw top right now? Not many, if, if any, except probably maybe on the entry level, which this may be, but definitely an old world nose. Let's give it a whirl. First thing I recognize out of this wine is it's pretty thin. Lighter style wine, um, but, and uh, yeah, very thin actually. Uh, a little awkward, a little greenish. The uh, wine really falls apart. Um, and, and that's a little bit of a concern of mine. Now, these are very interesting wines. I did something very different with these Pinot Noirs. Bless you, <coughs> not. These wines have been opened for three days. Because I was going to tape them the other day, and I didn't. And so, these have been opened for quite a while. Opened quickly, corked back in. So, you know, there, it's, you know, I don't know if this is the most super fair tasting for these wines. You know, maybe they've fallen apart after that much time being open. It's an awfully long time, though they were capped back in, even with corks on these, so it wasn't, you know, exactly opened open. Uh, but that's what this is. This is a three days opened blind Pinot Noir tasting. So that should be referenced and can factor into what happens. Um, so just wanna try new things. I'm just gonna kinda let the staff taste them. I was like, you know what, wait a minute. Let's let them sit, Some, you know, um, put the cork back in so it's not a true environment of, you know, you know it's not scientific you know, all the proper sanctions and hitting all the right cues, but these wines have been open quite a bit. So this wine is falling apart, and, I'm, and right away I'm like, hmm, did the, the openness hurt it? Little strawberry fruit coming through. I also get a little hint of tobacco on the back end, which I like. Um, I'm gonna score this right. Let's move on. Let's. Mutt. Thank you, sir. Let's give it a little snippy snip. This is even lighter on the color. 
Now this is almost, Matsuma, this almost has like a minty, spicy, you know, kind of nose. Kind of interesting, right? I get the bit. Right? Which is very unusual for Pinot. More of a Cabernet Sauvignon note that you get, but very minty, very minty kind of. Makes me think of like some sort of latte flavor that Starbucks would have during the holidays. Let's give it a whirl. Much more creamy than the last wine. This almost has strawberry fruit exploding on the finish. Nice firm tannins. I like this wine a lot more than the last wine. Let me phrase that. I like this wine more than the last wine. I'm trying to keep the superlatives down. It's tough for me. Um, well structured. <coughs> has some very obvious fruit um, on the back end. It really picks up momentum. It's kind of like a rock on the top of a hill. Really picks up momentum. I don't know why that just made me think of the pennies that you throw from the tall buildings. I used to be so scared of that. I still like, when I first started going to New York City with my grandma, I would literally think like somebody's gonna throw a penny from like the top of the World Trade Center back then. And like, you know, you could kill somebody with, you remember that? That was like a big myth thing. Good bit of salad. Nice wine. Not, not unbelievable. And not, you know, like shockingly amazing, but well made and uh, has some good fruit to it. Let's go to the next wine. Let's... Did somebody drink out of this? Feels a little lighter. Excited to see that. Wine number three. Okay. This wine is a hair darker than the last couple. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. This is by far the biggest nose of the bunch. Um, I definitely get some uh, clovey aspects on the nose. Little stinkified fruit, uh, raspberries for sure. There's je definitely a more focused intensity to this. Little hints of like chemical action. Interesting, let's give it a whirl. best wine of the bunch by far um, I really like the fruit on this wine really complex quite meaty I get um you know prosciutto on the, on the cheeks mod I feel like I'm getting some of that meaty gaminess uh, that I like so much in Pinot when it's collated and included in with the red fruit so I really get this great blend of cured meats meats strawberries and raspberries very pretty Little hint of floral action as well. I, I can absolutely taste taking a rose petal and licking it. That absolute tannic with that kind of floral thing going on. Definitely the smell in, induces. I like this wine a lot. It's, it's really well structured, quite smooth. I think a lot of palates will enjoy the smoothness of this wine. This is a good effort. Let me give it one more shot. I'm feeling that wine. It's a very good Pinot Noir, and definitely the creme de la creme so far. Wine number four. Trucking through this buying tasting. I, I kind of am a little bit more in like a, a store buying mentality than a show uh, mentality. I'm kind of just doing my thing here. Um, let's see what's going on here. Um, nice color as well, kind of darker towards the wine two and three more so. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Tight nose, tightest of the bunch. Yeah, tightest of the bunch. Getting very little, um, getting a little hint of like a horseradish component on the back end of the nose, which I think is kind of neat. You know, kind of raspberry fruit again, which has been dominant throughout all these wines. Not much, not much at all, which is stunning, considering how long it's been open. Let's give it a whirl. This is an interesting little wine. Comes in and explodes. You know, comes right down the middle and it captures my entire palate. Very mouth-watering, um, very, uh, you know, cloying, kind of just completely engulfs the palate while being thin. So I said cloying, but 
anti-cloying. It, it's not thick or viscous at all. It's actually quite watery, you know, thin, but the flavors are very vast. That's what I like from Pinot Noir. I mean, you get this really great balance, not overdone, not like those big petite Syrahs that lacked any kind of interest. This is also a very good wine. These two wines really, really came on, um, were definitely better than the last two. Uh, I just like the explosiveness of this wine. I like its finish. It's delicious. I really literally want pig snout right now more than anything in the world. You give me some pig snout and some pig feet and maybe some uh, steak tartare and I will rip through this bottle of wine and that meal. I need some good old classic countryside French cuisine right now. This wine is very nice, delicious, and I'm ready to, huh. This is gonna, pay, this is the first time this has ever happened. Is this one, two, three, four? One, two, three, four. First time in blind tasting history at Wine Library. Very interesting. I, I find that quite fascinating. Uh, and let's go through it. That's pretty neat. Okay, in last place, with an 85 plus point score. Oh, Ma, good job. You're on the ball, you're on the ball. Um, you know, I did feel like this was a $25 wine because I just know Pinot's gotten expensive, but this didn't do much for me. Very, very light. And this is the Bali uh, 2006 Pinot Noir from Gibson Vineyard in Central Otago, New Zealand. Uh, this wine is 40 US dollars. 92 points Wine Spectator, 92 points Neil Martin, who writes for Parker, who's a great critic, 91 Tanzer. That's three 90 plus scores from the most important wine critics in the world. And I went 85. My gut tells me, I did say Old World, if you remember. And I would have thought that it would have been, um, ugh, terrible. Almost got off the ricochet. Um, it, you know, I've always said Central Tago's very Burgundian like, so that was kind of interesting. I should have made that guess, screw top. Bad job by me, I could have got big kudos. Might have been affected by the uh, substantial um, impact of the uh, aeration. So that would be the only thing. You know, I, don't, I definitely don't think any of them tasted this wine after three days of breathing. Uh, not that it was totally breathing, because again, the cork was in it all the time, but you know, it's seeping in for sure and it was already open, so. Interesting. Wine number two, 88 plus. I thought it was, a, oh, yeah, so I was close on the price. I also thought this was a $25 bottle of wine. Rocco, Willamette Valley, 2006, Pinot Noir, 25 US dollars, 92 points, Wine Spectator, uh, great package. Uh, RoccoWines.com if you wanna check them out. Liked it, didn't think it was unbelievable, but nice little, great price point. I mean, on paper, what a wine. 25 bones, 92 points, Spectator from Willamette Valley. We can sell wines like that all day, and I cannot shoot today. Um, you know, okay, wine number three. Loved this wine. 90 plus points, I guess 30 bones. You just saw what I had to say about it. Tandem, auction block, Pinot Noir 2006 from Sonoma, 40 US dollars, 93 points wine enthusiast. Loved this wine, thought this was great. 40 bucks, a hair more than maybe I'd like to pay for it, but you can't deny its power and its elegance, and I thought it was really, really good. And, come on. That was at least on. I mean, got nipped. At least I focused that up. Wine number four, 92 points, 35 US dollars. Loved it. Testarossa, look at California. California makes a statement. I always diss California and talk about Central Tago and Willamette Valley. Cali takes the two top spots, big ups to California. USA, well, Oregon's USA, but anyway. Testarossa. Cuvée Niclair, Pinot Noir, 90 points wine spectator, 96 points wine enthusiast, but here comes the little kicker, 68 US dollars. So a little bit disappointing. Uh, I understand though, man, the wine was really, really good. Uh, you know, I thought it could be had for 35 to 45. Come on, put the camera on this time, because this time, you know, I'll do it with the pressure. Oh, I can't get over. That was devastating. I swore I'd come through. I was 0 for 4. Usually I'm so good. I'm sad. Like if I was a central title of Pinot Noir. 
Anyway, really interesting to see California shine through in this episode. Um, kudos to Testarossa and Tandem, two great established, well-known California wineries. Um, and Oregon and New Zealand take a little bit of a shot in the double blind. But, you know, it was open a little bit longer than normal. Something interesting. I don't know if this means anything. I don't want to start conspiracy theories, but Quirks. these two had corks and these two didn't. Kind of interesting. I, I, I would tell you that that has no impact in my opinion, but I thought it was interesting. Uh, this These did get corks back put in because I didn't know how it would seep over the time, um, but very intriguing. Interesting results. Question of the day. There's a little side bet that I have with somebody, so please, lurkers, I need you to come out. And... This has no hurt feelings to me whatsoever. It's a little side bet that I have with somebody very close to me. This is a straight bet, so I need your answers. Did you pick up Crush It, my book that came out in October? Yes and no, that's all I need from you. Little thing going on, it should be very fun. I will be up late into the wee hours. That's why this episode's a Tuesday episode, Mod. Tuesday's usually election day. I'll be up into the wee hours, counting the results. Thank you, fun show, interesting results. A lot of interesting dynamics. Screw cap. California stepping up and showing what it's made of. You, with a little bit of me, it's getting even smaller if you haven't been noticing. We're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not.